Welcome back, Gentry Jellets, to another episode of Everything You Missed. I'm your host, Crazy Nate, and today we're traveling down south to New Orleans to find everything you missed in Disney's movie, The Princess and the Frog. <laughs> Before they even showed us the movie title, they're already showing us Easter eggs. If you watch the lady beating her rug on the balcony, you probably recognize that's Rug from Aladdin. Now Disney's Princess and the Frog was directed by the famous Ron Clements and John Musker. They also directed the movie Aladdin, and that's probably why we see Rug in the video. And I'm talking about the original Aladdin, not the new one. But you need to remember these guys. Why? Because we're going to be mentioning them a lot. The movie takes place sometime in the early 1900s. We know this because in the car ride home we see a man reading a newspaper that reads, Wilson elected. President Woodrow Wilson is elected in 1912. If you look closer at the newspaper, we also see John Musker was named softball player of the year. Later on, when Tiana's all grown up, we see another newspaper, this time it's showing the exact date of the film, being April 25th, 1926. There's also another easter egg in the newspaper though, and it reads, Lucky Nine finishes last. That's a reference to Disney's famous Nine Old Men. The streetcar also has the famous A113 hidden on the front of it, and this is of course crediting to the school Cal Arts, where John Musker and John Lasseter both shared a class learning animation together. This is why we see A113 a lot in Disney films and in Pixar films. If you ever visit New Orleans, you will find out really fast, not only are they famous for their beignets, which I've never had, but it's on my bucket list, but they are also famous for their parades going on all the time. In fact, you can even get your own parade for like a hundred bucks. So parades are always going on down south and not just on the holidays. It's weird though that they had alcohol several times in the movie, especially since alcohol was illegal from 1920 all the way to 1933. Mulan and Tiana both have something in common that no other Disney princess has. And do you know what it is? That's right, they're both left-handed. Anika, who was the voice behind Tiana, is also left-handed in real life, and she requested that she be left-handed. And the director said yes. A famous musician from that time era that was credited was Louis Armstrong. Louis the Alligator plays a trumpet and sings just like Louis Armstrong. And when he mentions Louis Armstrong in the song, you can see him wiping the left side of his mouth with a branch. And I blow this horn so hot and strong like no one they've ever seen. I hate of Louis Armstrong. This is something that Louis Armstrong had to do in real life, which is why in his shows you can see him holding a handkerchief all the time. This is because he hit the high notes so many times with his trumpet and with such force that he actually damaged his lips and sometimes he had to leak a little bit of drool on his mouth, so that's why the handkerchief was there. A famous ride from Disneyland you can find in the movie as well. If you've been to Disneyland, you know they have an entire area of the park dedicated to representing New Orleans life. One ride from the era is the Mark Twain Riverboat Ride. If you look, you can see it matches the ride perfectly with the smokestacks and all the fancy little decorations. Another ride that can be found in the New Orleans part of Disneyland is the Haunted Mansion Ride. One character that's famous on that ride is Madame Leota. And when Dr. Facilier got sucked into the other side, if you pause at just the right moment, you will see on the tombstone, the very center one, is Madame Leota. The composer for the movie, or basically the guy that made the music for the movie, is Randy Newman. You might also recognize the name because he's the same guy that did the music for so many Disney movies like Toy Story and including the famous song, You've Got a Friend in Me. You got a friend in me. All right. This time he even got to have his very own cameo as a firefly. Ever wonder what those sparkly dots are up there? Pumba. I don't wonder. I know. Survey turn! Ba -dum -bum -yeah. Remember Evangeline Ray's girl? Well, there's a few theories here. Some people think that she actually isn't a star, and based on the location, she's actually being as the planet. What are they? They're fireflies. <laughs> that ain't no fire. And then some people think that she used to be a firefly as well, only she got eaten by a frog before we ever met her in the movie. And when she died, she became a star. Then there's some people that think this. At the end of the movie, there are two stars, so she's actually the path to Neverland. Remember second star to the right? There it is, Wendy. Second star to the right and straight on till morning. Look, a firefly. And some people think that she's a fairy godmother. This isn't the first time Disney would have a fairy godmother that was a star. What do you think? Well, I don't know. Oh, come on, well, give, give, come on, give, give, come on. Nah. We told you ours. Well, give. So who do you think Evangeline is? Ray's wife who passed away? Venus, the planet? The path to Neverland? Or do you think Evangeline is Tiana's fairy godmother? Or just a star? 
the ships aground on the shore of this uncharted desert isle. Another question I would have to ask you is when you get home from work or school or whatever, how long does it take for you to empty your pockets and kick off your shoes? It takes me about five seconds. But if you look at Tiana's alarm clock, guess what? It took her five minutes. Speaking of clocks, typically on a clock you see a Roman numeral four, and that's an I followed by a V. But in this case, it's four eyes, not four eyes. However, four eyes isn't actually a mistake. And in fact, this is based off the real clock in Jackson Square, which you can find in New Orleans. And if you go there, you can actually see they chose to make the four this way. So this isn't a mistake. <laughs> These three frog hunters are based on the classic slapstick comedians Larry, Curly, and Moe, or also known as the Three Stooges. One of them also has the same type of underwear as Prince Ahmed from Disney's Aladdin. <sighs> Possibly the stinkiest cameo anyone could ever have is this guy. He's Eric Goldberg, the animation supervisor for the movie. At the party, the mermaid costume was referencing to Little Mermaid. It even had the same exact shades of green. And Little Mermaid is also a movie that Ron and John co-directed. The guy in the octopus costume is Joe Grant, who is a writer for many famous movies like Fantasia or Dumbo or Pocahontas and many more. Contrary to popular beliefs on the internet, these two realtors are not actually references to Ron and John. However, when they get the cake splash on their face, the icing does in fact parody them to look like Ron and John. Another time we get to see the co-directors Ron and John are during the Mardi Gras parade. If you look at the float here, you can see them throwing the beads out to the crowd. Another thing interesting about this parade is if you look at the floats, they also are themed after movies that Ron and John directed. Like this float has King Triton and mermaids to theme obviously to The Little Mermaid, or this one is about an evil sorcerer towering over an Arabian city. Obviously this is a shout out to Aladdin. And not to be confused with Peter Pan, this float has a moon and a flying pirate ship, but the flag is the dead giveaway that this float is actually a reference to Treasure Planet, which was once again made by Ron and John. Well, directed by them. Now time to trigger some people. For some reason there's a lot of people out there on the internet that refuse to believe in hidden mickeys. But if you believe in unicorns, you probably believe in hidden mickeys. Anything for my best customer. Yay! When Charlotte LaBeouf shows off her collection of princess costumes, if you look closely at this dress, it looks like it has a bunch of hidden mickey patterns all over it. Now some are probably going to doubt that, but what about the dress in the back? I think that one is even more obvious that it's a bunch of hidden mickeys. What do you think? When Tiana finally sees her dreams come true at the end, Tiana's place has a live band called Firefly 5 plus Louie. This is actually a reference to a real life band called Firehouse 5 plus 2, made up of Disney studio personnel. Now, right now we're in a street, just like in New Orleans. The old New Orleans created for Walt Disney for you, and standing right here behind me is probably the most famous little Dixieland band in the world, the Firehouse 5 plus 2. Where two of the famous nine old men were actually members of the band. And you can even see Frank Thomas playing the piano. When Mama Oldie's going through her treasure chest, if you wish hard enough, you will see Genie's Lamb from Aladdin is flying through the air. And also this device right here is used by artists to hold up the pages in a very specific spot while they draw the characters. I understand that this next Easter egg may be a little bit of a stretch, but Jungle Book had their own tease here, and this is confirmed by Disney by the way. Floating down the bayou on Louis's belly is a call to when Mowgli was floating down the river on Baloo's belly. According to the directors, all these women here that Greek Prince Nabin, when he first arrives to New Orleans, are all modeled after real women who actually worked on the film. Down in Creepville, we have some secrets as well. When Dr. Facilier is dancing with the voodoo dolls, this is a parody to Mary Poppins when Bert is dancing with the penguins. When they're showing a little bit of PDA, the voice that says congratulations, Congratulations! That's the voice of Peter Del Vecchio, the producer. Now that they're finally married, we see a bunch of birds flying away. These are actually the same exact birds from Lion King, the original one. What are you talking about? Exactly the same. They just duplicated it several times. Here's what I mean. If you pause both movies and take these ones, for example, and copy and paste them over here, they line up perfectly frame by frame. Literally frame by frame. Some information I discovered during my research on the movie, but I have no place to put it, but I felt like you deserved to hear it. And that's this. There are about 2,000 different species of fireflies in the world, at least that we know of so far, and some species of fireflies don't even light up. While other species, the female lights up to attract the male to come near them. Only once the male gets close enough, he finds out the hard way that she was glowing for other reasons than what he thought. <laughs> she eats them. She eats them. She's probably friends with the Black Widow. Eh. Want me to sting her? Buzz off. 
Okay. Thank you to all my members for supporting the channel. Let me know what movie you want to talk about next. And remember, most importantly of all, gents and gentlets, share a smile. They are contagious. <laughs>